Hi everyone, I'm Nathan with theebookreader.com. For this video, I'm going to give you guys a review of the new Pocketbook Ink Pad Color. Uh, this is the latest uh, color e-reader from Pocketbook. It has the new uh, improved Kaleido screen, so you got better color and uh, a little bit better contrast without the uh, grid being quite as visible on the screen. So I already uploaded a video, uh, 4K, showing the screen up close and comparing it to the first gen, so I won't go over that here, but I will include that link in the video if you wanted to check out the comparison with regular e-ink and with the older color e-ink. Um, but yeah, so that definitely has improved a bit. You got better color on this one. Um, it's still got the uh, same sort of resolution as the original color screens. You got 100 PPI for color, 300 PPI for text. Uh, to me, the color looks quite good. I don't think the low resolution is that big of a deal. Um, the Like I said in the uh, e-ink comparison video, it's more about the uh, screen contrast. So. Uh, you do have page buttons down here, menu button, and a home button on the bottom edge. You've got USB-C, micro SD card slot, and then the power button there on the left. Uh, so the Pocketbook Inkpad, it kind of has a little bit of a rounded uh, edges, so it fits comfortably in your hand. Uh, you can hold it from the sides and page forward with your thumbs or use the buttons below the screen. So I kind of like having both options. I do like the design that Pocketbook chose to use in that regard. doesn't have that flush front layer either. has the indented screen, has capacitive touch screen. Um, 16 gigabyte storage space, one gigabyte RAM. Uh, so yeah, the color, I do think the color is quite good. Kind of has like a watercolor look to it. It's a little bit, you know, softer, obviously than like an LCD screen or anything like that. Um, but you know, the color quality has improved and the text quality, uh, does look a bit better. You can't see the screen door effect as much. You can see a little bit of grid if you look closely on here. Um, that's just sort of the effect of the uh, color layer. So it's just a filter over the top of a regular ink screen. Um, and so like the biggest downfall with that is it just makes the screen darker. So here's with the front light off. As you can see, the screen's pretty dark. You kind of have to have the front light on pretty much all the time. Here's the look with the color. So this is just like in a well-lit room as well. So um, you, you definitely really got to rely on the front light a lot more than you do with a regular ink screen when it comes to the color. So you can adjust the front light up here and it has the auto adjusting front light. You can turn it on or off, adjust the brightness with this dial here. So. None of these color models have the warm front light option, I guess, because it messes with the color. But um, so yeah, it just has the cool color front light option on here. And you can also adjust the front light uh, by swiping up and down the uh, left side of the screen if you want to adjust it while reading. So it makes it easier that way. The only thing I don't like is that if you hit the bottom, it'll prompt to turn it off and it gets kind of annoying. But um, it does work effectively for uh, adjusting the front light on the fly. So here's a look at the user interface on the Pocketbook Inkpad color. Um, so this is just sort of like the default layout. It is nice having color, uh, you know, color covers showing up on your uh, ink device here. Um, so you've got some different sorting options on Pocketbooks. Actually, they have quite a few options here. You can also browse by folders. You can set up your content on the device using folders if you would like, and you can browse that way. You also got, uh, you can set up your collections on here. Um, and then you've got these different sorting options by like genre and authors and so you got some different, uh, you know, different ways to find your content on here. I do like the uh, just the regular view the best. We'll switch back to that, the all books. And then you've got some different layouts up here in the top right corner. So if you wanted to change the layout to get uh, get more content on the screen, you can have smaller covers, smaller list view, bigger list view. So uh, you can scroll through or just use that page down button. It'll scroll through the page one a section at a time. So let's load up a comic here. Uh, the biggest negative I can say for the Pocketbook ink pad color is it's just slow. As you can see here, it takes quite a while to load the comic. And then it takes a little, quite a long time to turn pages as well. Sometimes up to five seconds when you first load a new book or a new comic like this. Uh, and then like once it's loaded for a while, it gets faster. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, it's probably one of the most sluggish e-readers I've uh, reviewed in a long time, quite frankly. I mean, it's not too bad when you're zooming or anything like that. But just the page turns, the responsiveness, um, I don't know why it's so sluggish. Uh, They're using a dual core processor. So, I mean, it's kind of not the fastest, uh, but other, like the Kindle gets by with the uh, Kindle Oasis has the same processor, gets by just fine uh, speed wise with that. So, it's just sort of some optimizing with Pocket Pocketbook software. Uh, it's just a bit more sluggish than other devices. So, you got some different adjustment options in here as far as like, uh, you know, setting the page up if you want to set. Uh, fit to width, you can fit to page, you can set up some different modes in here. And you also got that custom zoom dial at the bottom. You can kind of customize the zoom level. Again, responsiveness isn't exactly great. It takes a while to uh, update the screen when you're messing with any of these settings. Uh, you got some additional options over here and then you've got the uh, custom uh, cropping here. You can have it automatically set to 
crop as well. So let's load up a different book. So it's not always as sluggish as it is. So I mean, obviously comic files are a little bit larger. So this is a kid's book. Again, the first time you load though, it does take quite a while when you're loading from the home screen or the library view. Um, but the pages, page turns aren't quite as slow in this one. They are at first, like I said, but then once it's been loaded for a bit, um, the page uh, speed t definitely does improve. So uh, it's just sort of one of those things with their operating system. It is Linux based. It doesn't run Android like the uh, Onyx Nova 3 color. I also have the original six inch pocketbook with the older color ink screen. And for some reason it's faster than this one too, I guess, because the larger screen, it takes a bit longer to uh, process, but yeah, so um, definitely the uh, biggest con on this device is just its speed. Uh, so here's talk about some of the interface options. You got this task uh, manager, you can jump to different stuff. You can also access that by holding the home button. Uh, you can take screenshots. Uh, so the device also supports text to speech. You got some different features. Uh, built in here. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about some of the settings in here. So you, you got this personalized uh, menu where you can set up some different things like you can, uh, so you could, this also has a G sensor. So you can turn that on and off in here. Uh, so it'll automatically rotate the screen when you rotate the device. Uh, and then in here, you've also got this button mapping or key mapping where you can uh, customize exactly how you want the buttons to respond for long press and short press. Um, so that's pretty cool. You the, I like Pocketbook's customization options in here. You can also, you know, set up what, if you wanted to open a book, uh, when you open up a startup, you can have uh, these different widget settings for the home screen. So you can turn off those recommended books that show up on the bottom of the home screen, which is nice. Um, so you just come in here, turn that off, and you get more of your own content on the home screen instead of uh, that recommended content. Um, you can customize your page refresh frequency in here. So you do have some different stuff and you can also set up user profiles if more than one person is using this device. There are a few other reading apps you can install on this as well. CoReader is one of the more popular options. I have an install guide on my website if you wanted to see that. I haven't installed it on this model, but I installed it on the older one. So it added some additional functionality, being able to install some different apps. And you can also have, they have some different services on here like uh, Dropbox. You can access Dropbox to uh, add books to your pocketbook. Uh, and they also support Adobe DRM for eBooks. So uh, here's a look at some of the languages supported. So yeah, it's got, got a lot of... Uh, language supported in here and it comes with um, several dictionaries uh, and translation dictionaries that, that are in here as well. So you got some options for that. So I mean the pocketbooks have a lot of the features you'd expect in an e-reader. Um, they've also got some they, their own cloud support that you can use to uh, transfer content and they've got the RSS news reader you can push content to your device. Um, so here on the home screen they got that app section where you can access some of this stuff. Uh, you got the web browser as well. Uh, music player, so it has uh, audiobook support. Um, you got a few games on here as well. Um, for some re reason, the card game isn't in color. They haven't updated that for the color screen for some reason, but it, you know, it's usable. So let's open up an ebook here and talk a little bit about the ebook app. So this is where color ink gets a little weird because you know the text isn't quite as good as a regular ink screen as I showed in that comparison video. Again, the links below uh, in the description if you wanted to see how it compares to a Kindle. But um, I mean, the text is totally readable. There's not, it's not difficult to read at all. So you've got the usual, you know, line spacing and margin options. You've got uh, quite a few default fonts uh, set up in here. Uh, you got the uh, a bold option. The only thing I don't like is you can't customize the boldness. Uh, it just has the one dark bold option. You have some different menu options for the layout of the page here. Uh, but with the color ink, of course, like the biggest deal uh, with reading ebooks is you can add, you know, colored highlights. So you got the different highlight options on here, uh, and then you can hold down on any word, the, the, the highlighting isn't as smooth as it could be. You kind of got to work out of here, but um, yeah, so you got the four different colors here. The notes are also exportable. Um, and another thing you can do here is you can actually uh, write on the screen using like your finger or if you had like a capacitor stylus, so it doesn't have any like Wacom touchscreen or anything, but you can use your finger to, you know, draw on the screen if you want using this mode here and you have the different colored options. Um, and you've got an eraser, so obviously it doesn't have any like pressure support or anything like that. You're going to get like an Onyx device with a Wacom touchscreen, but I mean, it's just like a basic little note app here that you can uh, use different colors and mark up the screen however you'd like. You got um, undo, redo, so, you know, just like a little basic note app. There's also like a coloring book app that you can access from the uh, app drawer there that you can kind of color on the screen using different uh, shapes and like fill options and different uh, pens. 
a little bit different, um, you know, setup than I've seen on other devices. So, I mean, this has just been kind of a quick look at the uh, Pocketbook ink pad color with the new uh, Kaleido Plus screen, 7.8 inch ink screen, definitely a step up from their six inch screen before. Makes a lot more sense for stuff like comics and, you know, color content like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video right here. Check out the ebookreader.com for the full review. Also check out my review of the Nova 3 color I'll be posting soon. It's very similar to this.